Great, glad to be here. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about different ways how you can extract information out of a call, whether it's a recorded call or it can be real time. Uh, there's generally, we look at it like five different ways, um, different types of information you can extract. So first is a transcript. Take a machine transcript, it's a machine that generates a transcript. The challenge with that is it is just a transcript. And so the moment you have thousands or millions of conversations, um, what do you do with those bunch, of, uh, those bunch of transcripts? And what you really find is companies, they, or people come to us and they say, hey, I, need a, oh, I want a transcript. And we're like, actually, no, you don't want a transcript. You, you need a churn detector. You need an appointment detector. You need a hot leads detector. You need a quality score for your agents. That is the real solution. Because once you have the transcript to bridge the gap to what you really need, what drives ROI for you, um, a lot of people tend to screw up that pattern from the, or basically the difference between the transcript to where you really want to go. Now, that being said, there are use cases where a transcript is needed. And what we found is typically three. One is in a captioning space. So you have a bunch of videos. Uh, you need handicap compliance. You want to transcribe it so people who are hard hearing, who can't hear, they can read it. That's a valid use case. We do uh, a lot of that. Voicemail is another one. We all know that. Who listens to voicemail anymore? You want to read them. You want to read them as a text message. Uh, very valid to do that. And then also we see first pass for human transcription companies. You want something transcribed. Machines should transcribe the easy part, and then humans go and edit all that information. So you need a churn detector. You need something else, but not the transcript. What are those other things? The first thing we do is what we call call metrics. Now. What call metrics is, when you create a machine transcription, you have, think of it, different words that the engine extracts, but you also have a lot of other information you get out of that. So each word, you have start times, end times. You have maybe voice energy, how loud do you speak, how high do you speak. So there's a lot of additional metrics that come to that, and you have that information for each single word. And so what you can do with that is you can extract that information and do some math on it, and you can create metrics. You can say, well, how fast does somebody speak? So when you work with companies like, let's say, Twilio or Voxbone or others that can support, let's say, multi-channel recording, meaning each leg of a call is on a separate channel, when that um, hits our service, we actually generate everything we do channel separated. And that's when it gets really interesting because when you then call a computer, let's see, words per minute, how fast does somebody talk? You have an agent that talks and a customer that talks. Turns out if your agent talks as fast as the client, you sell more because you're more, you know, you connect more with this person. Same is true how loud you speak, how quiet, dy voice dynamics, like do you talk really boring the same way or do you, is it more interesting? Makes a difference. People listen to you more if the voice is more varied than if you just keep droning on at the same level. And so this is all information you can extract. Silence detection is another one. Sounds very simple, but there's a lot of fraud that can be detected with uh, these type of detectors. Um, or you know, misuse, abuse in call centers. So there's about 30 metrics you can extract by channel for each speaker, and just that type of information creates instant ROI. And what's nice about it is you can do this for a thousand calls and a million calls. You can do standard deviations, averages, uh, outliers, and so on. So a lot of value that can be extracted from that. The third thing is we call topics and keywords. So often what we find is, um, and you see the same problem you know, on YouTube and uh, many other f files is that you have a file and there's maybe a file title that's a little couple descriptions of what's in there, maybe a description, two or three sentences, and that's it. And then you have a conversation that maybe lasts an hour. So what's in it? And let's say you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of those, how do you make sense of that? And so what is really useful is uh, so-called topics and keyword detectors. And when you look at the major ASR providers, pretty much all of them have that. And the idea is you have those calls that come in, you automatically extract this information, and that's where it gets interesting. Let's say, in this case here, we have a, what that would look like on a chemistry lecture, and then this actually down here is a earnings call, uh, a Google earnings call. So very different conversations, but you can know already, okay, how often was what mentioned, you have the topics on the left, 
And then think of it, you click on it, and it will play back the call right at that spot in time. Very interesting, like in lecture captures or university education settings, where you can jump straight to solving linear equations, and you don't have to listen to everything else. So think of it like an index into your recording that organizes it. But that's where it gets interesting, because if you support channel separation, let's say like Twilio does or Voxbone and other companies, and you transcribe it separately, and you, you do this topic extraction on different channels, then you can do other stuff, like here, click on select speakers, say, let's select chain, and now you see in this conference that happened that Jane probably talked about all the financial stuff, so he must have been the CFO. And what's really interesting, if you run, let's say, a large conferencing service, and you record separately, you can start creating knowledge profiles. Who knows more about what? Think of it, every word that's in here is time-stamped and is stamped into different channels. And if you have additional information about the different speakers, there's an enormous knowledge profile you can gain. And that you can, again, leverage with knowledge maps and see where somebody fits, uh, how much of an expert somebody is. So the use cases of this are pretty, pretty spectacular. And you have some really interesting companies that do really cool stuff with that information. Now it gets really interesting, search and query API. Um, again, the use case, you have thousands, millions of calls that come in. The real use case is, is when you start doing things that overarch the entire data set. So what if you have a, think like an, a, almost a query you can run and say, all right, give me all the calls that sorted by agent that are longer than 30 seconds, where the agent, and show me how much of a proper greeting did they do, and how much did they do an upsell, or did they mention an upsell opportunity. And so you basically can, with one query, execute really complex metrics. So here's a list that tells you exactly, sorted by the different agents in your call center or participants in your calls, whether they use certain things or not. Was an appointment made? Was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mentioned? If any of those was mentioned, there's probably an appointment made. And you can score this, you can rank this, you can sort this, you can populate BI dashboards. I mean, it, it, this is basically what you need to spot specific things. So um, this is also very interesting in, again, call center use cases. Who needs more training about the upsell opportunities? Was uh, Verizon mentioned? We have to sell against Verizon. Did the agent say the right thing when they had to sell against Verizon? Did the customer mention a certain word first or other? So think of it like a complete query language that allows you to query audio the same way you would query text. So the, the possibilities are endless and um, really exciting stuff that can be done with that. Now, let's go to the exciting stuff. So there's a lot of things that clients want to detect that are not as easy as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's more complex things like, well, a hot lead, or is this customer about to churn? So you're on a call and you want to find out, is this guy going to buy a product in three weeks? Now, if you want to solve this, you can use machine learning to do that. And to visualize that, imagine this is a surface here, and let's say you have a data set few thousand calls, 100,000 calls, and for each call you know whether the call ended up buying the product three weeks from now or not. Now, whether you can imagine now all the calls that end up buying are above this surface and the calls that ended up not buying are below this surface. If you now go and use a query API, if then rules, to try to predict or separate the data set of the guys that ended up buying versus not, if you do this if then rules, you basically approximate that surface the way you see it here. You have these hard cuts that are just these if-then rules. And the challenge of that is that it's fairly hard to approximate this, this surface to get this differentiation uh, between the people that ended up buying and the ones that ended up not buying. And that's where the fifth part comes in, which is this machine learning AI layer that you use to approximate this error surface. And what that looks like is here's about what that approximation looks like. And to explain everything with cats, because to explain things with cats is always much better, if you have a picture here and you try to approximate it with rules, if then, that's about how close that gets approximated. While if you use machine learning, you can see you can approximate that goal of predicting cats or predicting who's going to buy and who's not going to buy much, much more closer. So let's make this exciting, and here's some real data. So this is a, a Fortune 50 company. Concept is calls come in. Um, we had a large data set where they said, look, um, 
Here's all the data, and for each call, we know whether they ended up buying the product in three weeks or not. And they wanted to know, tell us who's going to buy. Can you replicate the data set? And this is the results, what you see. So here we used machine learning, the usual machine learning algorithms. Uh, we actually have an auto model builder that automatically tries lots of different models. This is what the mass model looked like. So imagine calls come in. Each call gets a confidence assigned to it. If the confidence value is less than 50%, we say, not a hot lead, this guy's not going to buy. If the confidence value is higher than 50%, this guy's a hot lead, and they will buy. Now, what's interesting here, when you, for example, take, um, let's say over here, if you have a 35% confidence on a call, what that means, in 250 calls, we were right. The guy, the people, those 250 people did not buy. 35% confidence, we're mostly right. However, there was a small amount of people that actually, we said they will not buy, but they ended up still buying. And interesting, the same thing over here as well. So 65%, mostly we're right, but there's a small little error right here where the machine learning model was wrong. Now one can say, all right, average accuracy, 75, 80% of this model. Is that all the value you can extract? What's interesting about this machine learning AI algorithm is there's a lot more than just a 80% accuracy you can do if somebody gonna buy it or not. And here's what. The amazing thing is when you look at the extremes, here you can say 70% confidence the person will buy, the accuracy is 100%. We predicted every single client that ended up buying, and the same on the other end. You can see on the 25% and less, our confidence is 100%. And that's where you make massive ROI improvements. What happens is you can say, all right, the calls that come in, we know 100% nobody will buy of those calls, the 25% at lower confidence. Guess what you do? You don't follow up with them. Maybe send them to your competitors. They should waste their time with them. <laughs> so um, the value is also on the higher end here. What's interesting is if you have leads here that come in and you know with 100% accuracy that they buy, and this is what this provider did, those leads got passed on to somebody who would then convert them. And in the past, they would pass on good leads, and Joe, who doesn't like to get up in the morning, wouldn't call back the leads. And Jim would be very diligent, turn those leads into real sales, and convert all 10 of them. And when you talk to Joe, hey, why do you only convert five? He would say, oh, those were bad leads. So guess what this company did? They took 10 of those leads, send them to Joe, send them to Jim. Joe converts five, Jim converts 10, Joe is gone. So they can take that information and straighten out the, 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 basically the entire distribution system and really optimize things. The second thing is interesting also, you can optimize your resources um, as those leads come in and say, all right, let's start with the highest convert, highest um, probability leads and start converting and making money. And now this next thing is the most valuable thing as it comes to applying AI machine learning to calls. When you look in the middle here, what you can see is if our confidence is, let's say, 55% or 45%, the errors where we're wrong, they cancel each other out. So as you use machine learning on calls, what happens is, since those call, since they cancel each other out, if you aggregate data, let's say you have a thousand calls that come in in Oregon and a thousand calls that come in in California, and we predict how many of those will buy, and you find out in California we have 10% that are going to buy based on this model, and in Oregon we have 20% that are going to buy. What's interesting, if three weeks later you look how many people ended up actually buying, guess what? The result is 10% and 20%. It's right on. And so that is extremely valuable as you deal with communications. As calls come in and you need to detect things, and it can be churn, it can be hot leads, it can be appointments made, it can be fraud, it can be whatever it is. If you can say, gosh, why is the fraud rate going up? You can also slice and dice it. You can say, all right, let's dice, slice this down by agent, by call centers, by group, by manager, the usual slice and dice tools to take that information and really make it available. This can also be an NPS score, net promoter score, meaning how likely are you to recommend this company, this product to your friends? And again, slice it down by different providers. And the value this provides is really off the charts. Finally, the same AI and machine learning can be applied to real-time communications as well. This here was where we built the model on the typical hardcore sales. We all know, they call you, they try to sell you a credit card or solar cells or whatever that is. Here we had a model listening into a real-time stream, and while the call is going on, listening for 30 seconds, and after 30 seconds, decide, is this guy going to buy or not? And if the guy was not going to buy, just cut the call. 
all wind it down or whatever, how extreme you want to do it. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, there's the more polite ones and the less ver polite versions. Now, what's really fun here is this blue line. When you train the model, you can pick any dot on this blue line and you can see how well that model is doing. The most interesting one is probably this one here. So if you pick this dot here and say, all right, model, 30 seconds, decide, cut or not cut, you would save 40% of your calls, of your call volume. This is real cost. These are agent people on the phone, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, all in. And you would lose only about 3% of your sales. So imagine, 40% reduction of your calls and you only lose 3% of your sales. Or if you want to lose 0% of your sales, you can reduce 20% of your calls. Or here you can go up as crazy as you want. But what's interesting is the future that we will see is that any outbound calls, any real-time communication, we will have AI predictors that will monitor those conversations and optimize those conversations to drive ROI, to predict churn, to do whatever you want to detect, optimize, summarize, and do with it. Thank you.